There are always ways that I want to explore and, and want to try. Uh, but th I think the primary way I've done that in my largest classes is through use of polling devices. So iClicker is, is the commercial you know, name of the device that we typically use. But through these questions that are posed in class, clicker questions, and they can either be a straight question where students answer individually, and then we'll go over you know, what the answer to a particular question was and the reason for how to get there. Uh, for other classes, especially genetics, there I've uh, developed a lot of group work in class and that's, that's the way I engage students in that class and it's not so much me engaging them as much as them engaging each other in small groups within a larger class, again much smaller than general biology but still over a hundred students in that class. Then for my smaller classes, my smallest is developmental biology, and there it's a lot easier because there you can mentor students and you can engage them personally. And I, I take uh, what is often called the Socratic approach, but I engage students with a lot of questions to ask them, well, how would you design this experiment? Or what, what's the interpretation of, of this, this graph? Or what would be a good control for this study? Uh, and so the way I engage students varies from class to class, and it's primarily driven by, by numbers of students in the class. I th th there's no question that active learning versus straight lecture, I mean, that, that, that's been shown over and over again. No question that active learning improves student performance, depending on how you want to define that, but it improves student learning, which is, which is really important. I, I sometimes think that students and, and even a lot of faculty think that for some reason being a good teacher is, is somehow genetically, you know, bred or something, that, that there are just people who have it. And, and, you know, you use an interesting phrase there, edutainment. There, I think there's a lot of faculty or students who think that you, you either have it or you don't, and if you have a lot of charisma and personality and you can make the class fun, then you're going to be a popular teacher, and if you, if you don't have that kind of outgoing personality, maybe you won't. And certainly, being socially skilled helps. You know, you want to be able to talk to students and, and, and other people, but at the same time, is that there are a lot of different styles, and, and people can be equally as effective in terms of um, student engagement and student excitement without having to fit a certain mold. You know, it's fun for students to see that you feel passionate about something, but at the same time, uh, I've seen uh, teachers who are really just extraordinary in what they do because they, they have been able to assimilate you know, or develop other qualities that really help them to connect with students. Um, for example, communication with students is so important, it's becoming even more important now. And it doesn't take an entertainer to, to learn how to respond to students promptly and how to, how to stay engaged with them. And, and so those kinds of practices can be learned, you know, fairness, organization, communication. Those are things that students appreciate, um, that they, that they recognize and that they value. Um, a lot of the teaching techniques we use actually work for any kind of student. So just engaging them in active learning and getting them to think critically about what we're doing um, is really helpful for any student. And um, being able to actually go through the entire process of science in my classes with the small enrollment size is a big advantage. So students um, come up with their own hypothesis. They collect their own data during the course of the semester. We work together on data analysis, so they learn how to do statistics. And then they write it all up and give presentations. And they're engaged through the entire process. They're picking their hypothesis. It's not just an assigned kind of cookbook experience. And as we're doing that, we are really testing our critical thinking skills because 
they're choosing something that hasn't been done before. And we're going to run into a whole host of problems about how do you get out there, how some students wanted to um, compare pollinators on and off well pads, for example. So we all had to learn together, okay, how are we going to sample these pollinators is something that I hadn't done before. Um, and then the students are engaged through the entire process and they really have ownership of the project. And they're the ones that are learning how to do this and how to build the traps and what kind of paint to use to attract the pollinators and all of those little details that um, alone maybe aren't the most important thing about science, but all together they're putting together their problem solving skills and, you know, addressing new and novel questions. And that's one of the most important skills for a student is not to just memorize content that they have in classes, but to be able to take what they've learned and apply it to new challenges um, when they leave college. So I think that um, having some authentic experiences that allow students to think and grow and learn how to be a scientist on their own um, is successful no matter uh, what demographic the students are are coming from. This last academic year I started like a biology and society series of discussions in class. Um, so it's been really good. We've taken kind of depending on the semester like five or six topics and I've had them you know do some reading ahead of time and and then come to class and even in that large group we've had some pretty pretty meaningful discussions and you know it's nice to give them a chance to voice their opinions and to talk to each other and to not just be you know lecturing and just sort of spewing <laughs> information at them because that's definitely not the best way to learn. Early on because of my inexperience I just felt like I had to deliver a lot of content similar to my counterpart at Washington State. Make sure all the information is delivered in a timely manner and I hit the download button and, and all the information was transmitted through lectures and through time and actually uh, I'll put in a plug for ETE going to the summer conferences I really started to learn how new age students learn in terms of incorporating technology, uh, new pedagogy, different strategies, experiences from other faculty that um, have won awards or have great ideas to how to engage students. So I think it's been a, a transition and an evolution to incorporate more pauses, review of content, especially difficult material. But what I found has been, to me, one of the more useful tools is throwing in multimedia, video clips. Uh, there's polling systems that uh, I've been implementing. Originally it was the iClicker. We've transitioned now to uh, a different system called Top Hat. And it's just a really nice way to, to break up the class, review content. When I see the end of year uh, course evaluations, I see that students appreciate trying new things. From what I'm learning, the mixed approach where it's, it's not so dry, show passion, interest, that you really like what you're teaching and sometimes there's days where you may have a lot of things on your mind and you come into class and you're just not as thrilled to be there and I think students recognize that and students appreciate that and it helps engage in, in the learning process. I do, I try to also do with like the eye clicker questions like some like not quite think pair share but at least some thinking and pairing where they're thinking about the answers to questions on their own and I encourage them to talk with their neighbors and to make new friends and find new people in the classroom that they can discuss answers with because I think that's valuable for students as well not only for students that are maybe struggling with the material but also students that have a good grasp on the material for them to be able to re-explain that to one of their peers. I, I think I would say that whenever I have students ask me like how can I study for this 
class better, that is probably like my number one suggestion. Well, I have lots of suggestions, <laughs> but I say talk to yourself, like explain it to somebody else, explain it to your dog, explain it to yourself in the car and see if you can like get those words out. Because a lot of times you think you have a very good grasp of something yeah. in your head until you try to put it into words. So. Yeah.